The keepers at Chester are engaged in battle with a highly organised and efficient enemy. A family of meerkats is determined to fill in the trench that surrounds their enclosure. Senior keeper Shane Blake calls on students Becky Brown and Simon Nock to stop them. Basically, the reason for digging this all back around the sides um, is to stop the meerkats climbing up the walls and getting out. Before we started this, the soil came down and it was about level with about here. So obviously, once it's here, they can they can use this. They can actually climb up this, and then once they get in the into this paddock, then we've got problems. The site at Chester Zoo covers more than a hundred acres. If the meerkats scale the wall. Catching them would be challenging, to say the least. We're going to take it back, well, as far as we can, really. But um, as you see, it's quite a job. Meerkats we have here are one family group. It's a mother and a youngsters. Very inquisitive. We've got to keep a good eye on them. <laughs> they can move the earth quite effortlessly compared to the rest of us. They can spend a good part of the day just digging. They always seem to keep themselves busy. Um, hence, where they're digging, they're always foraging. Um, you'll always see one on lookout. Um, they work as a unit and they're very good at it. Once you've gone out the paddock, you'll find they'll come over here and they'll dig part of it back in again for the next day. But, you know, it's a little war with them. It's fun. It's a war that Shane is gradually winning, thanks to his student recruits. Simon and Beckett are on a year's placement at Chester. The keeper's job is varied, it's not just feeding and cleaning animals it is other things as well like digging but yeah it's good I like being in with the animals although it's a bit physical it's you know it's, it's not like that we're killing ourselves doing it <laughs> you know it's not like a boot camp or anything <laughs> well a little bit but... Simon and Becky have been very good year students they can be trusted to do a lot of the jobs by themselves they're very keen they come out with a lot of ideas um, I won't say too much because I get big heads, but as long as I get a nice present off them when they leave, I'll do them a good report. Working closely with the meerkats on a regular basis has given Shane the chance to watch their unique character traits emerge. The more you watch them, they all seem to have their own little personalities. They do little things like sunbathing. Um, they basically sit with their backs against the window like a normal person would on a sunshine, and they're just like that sunbathe, which is really cute and funny. With their enlarged claws and narrow feet and hands, meerkats can easily dig burrows up to 10 feet deep. Shane suspects it won't be long before the shovels are out and the trench warfare commences once more. I should imagine it'll take long for the meerkats to have it all back in again. It could be take up to anything to a month. Um, they can be quite fast diggers. Obviously, if they they want, they can probably spend most of the day digging and most of it will all end up back in the walls. It's never ending. Right, come on, girls. Anyone come in? It's been a difficult 24 hours for head keeper Tim Rowlands. Good girl. OK, OK. Rafters, the two year old giraffe hand reared by Tim has been battling an extremely rare disease called pemphigus. Pemphigus foliaceus is where the body generates antibodies which start to attack the junctions that hold all the skin cells together. Despite their best efforts, the vet team has been struggling to find a successful treatment. As we've started to reduce his steroid dose, the, the condition has started just to flare up again. And it seems Rafter's health is deteriorating. Yesterday he took a turn for the worse. Um, when we came in the morning he looked a little uncomfortable on his feet and um, his ears were drooping. He looked a little bit uh, uncomfortable in his stomach. Um, we spoke to the vets in the morning and we were just observing him throughout the day. And um, then twice midday his uh, legs buckled. Um, whether he had pain in his feet we're not sure but um, twice he went down and, Second time we had to go in and get him up and bring him inside. The condition has affected Rafter's appetite and Tim has been closely monitoring his weight. 
Rafters back in February weighed 462k. 424k. He's lost quite a bit of weight. He should, as a young, growing male, be putting it on. And this is the problem we're getting, that he won't, act, he won't eat. It's just another symptom of... Another, one of the symptoms that have shown there's something quite drastically wrong with him. The disease has also had serious effects on Rafter's hooves, which have become cracked and blistered, making it painful to walk. The new horn growing through should be clear and shouldn't be split, and it's all coming through split. So that's not showing us good signs at all, it's showing that we still have this problem. Discussion with the relevant people, myself, curator, and the vet team, this just might bring the inevitable forward, but we really are back to square one, and the only treatment we were giving him now isn't working. We have to review the whole situation, so I think decisions have to be made. The team has been using steroids to stabilise his condition, but these also carry risks. It's proving to be a difficult balancing act for zoo vet Steve Unwin. As of yesterday, uh, we've increased the amount of um, steroids that Rafters is getting, um, and uh, that will be maintained uh, for uh, the next week. Unfortunately, it's finding a dose that is uh, not going to harm rafters, but also, at the same time, control the disease that he's got. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, at the moment, it looks like we're, we're losing the battle. This has never been seen in a giraffe before, so we're really um, trying to treat it blindly at the moment. But if he's suffering um, and we can't get him right, then we will make the decision to put him down. It will be one of the hardest decisions Tim will ever make. At the tropical house, an extremely rare turtle called Timmy is on its way to hospital. Thanks, sweetie. OK, here we have our little uh, Arnhem leaf turtle. And the problem with this little sweetie is that she had a dislocated hip. We're still not absolutely sure how she did this, but the good news is that she recovered very well with a uh, mixture of medications, pain relief and antibiotics. Seven weeks ago, Steve took Timmy to Liverpool University's Small Animal Teaching Hospital, where a scan identified the dislocated hip. Here we go. Today's return trip will reveal whether Steve's treatment has been successful. Because the CT scanner takes about um, a minute to do, uh, we need her to be still for that length of time. Last time she was the model patient and didn't move at all without any need for anaesthetic. She was very calm um, and so that was great. So we're hoping for the same thing this time as well. So this uh, tape is just to stabilise her really. The scan is a costly but crucial procedure. Adam leaf turtles are all but extinct in the wild, but there are hopes that Timmy will breed in the coming months. It's taking an image every half millimeter through the animal, so we can get uh, a 3D view of the of the back half of the turtle. That's okay. fine. We finished now. Okay, let's go and uh, put her back in her box so she doesn't get stressed. You're right. No change. Great. There you go. Right, let's go and have a look at these images. Anna Newitt, lecturer in diagnostic imaging, is concerned that the bone could be deteriorating. Um, we can actually see that there is an area of greater bone loss here, particularly here. There are some other areas that this is the most notable one where we've got a big sort of defect in the bone which isn't present on the other side. So we have got continuing bone erosion. That does suggest an ongoing process of some sort. I mean, because there have been changes in the turtle's health since the last scan, Anna can't rule out the possibility of infection. The team will return Timmy to Chester for further blood tests. At Chester Zoo's medical centre, vet Steve Unwin and senior veterinary nurse Karen Homer are running tests on a rare turtle called Timmy, who has a dislocated hip. 
Okay, this is a patient's game, a waiting game. We're collecting blood from the turtle just to check its uh, white cell count. And where we collect blood from for preference is the jugular. That obviously runs down either side of the neck. Now to be able to extrude said head from neck, you need strong fingers and patience. What we can potentially do is um, sedate her to be able to get the blood sample. Um, but that also has its own risks. Come on, mate. So what Karen's trying to do is get her fingers behind the jaw, and so that will stop the animal being able to retract its head. Um, but to all intents and purposes, this is still a healthy turtle, and they've got very strong neck muscles because it's a reflex. They want to get back into their shell for safety's sake. Turtles are worse than tortoises to try and get their heads out, um, and especially this type of turtles seem to be quite shy and not really willing to poke their heads out to have a look around. So you have to try and be quick and what you don't want to do is cause any damage to the turtle or cause it any stress. Karen gets her fingers behind the turtle's jaw but must be careful not to hurt her. Oh, sorry. No, 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 she's... Good. She, just go, if you let her loose okay. for a second, just hoping she'll relax again. The team's patience pays off. Brilliant. And Steve is finally able to take blood for analysis. The blood sample we've just taken um, will be able to tell us if there is uh, an infection systemically which may need treatment. So we'll send that off to the lab now and uh, see what the uh, findings are when they come back in a day or so. At the elephant enclosure, 51-year-old female Sheba is enjoying some TLC, courtesy of head keeper Mick Jones. She's our oldest elephant, and she gets a little bit sore, like all of us who are getting older. And uh, we're just going to give her a warm water massage with a power washer on her legs, so to get her clean and to sort of ease the discomfort, really. As matriarch of the herd, Sheba has a lot on her shoulders. The responsibility of providing support and caring for the other elephants can take its toll. A special power washer massage will drain any noxious chemicals from Sheba's aging muscles, helping her to feel elephant again. Sheba, foot. Sheba has an abscess in her foot, and tomorrow we'll see the vet. All right, good girl. In the meantime, a relaxing foot bath will help keep her feet free of infection. We're going to put her feet in a soak with an uh, antibacterial scrub, and then she can have her breakfast. Good girl, Sheeps. It's a bit warm, Bubba. Sheba has to have a little help with breakfast these days because she's only got two teeth. Give her some chopped grass. That's just chopped. She doesn't have to chew it so very much. Given a, a, a bran mash, that's got uh, rapeseed oil in it, that's for her joints. Special breakfast, then it shoves. Huh? And then we've got her senior mix, and then elephant pellets. They all get this stuff. Voila. <whistles> so elephants have, have, uh, have six sets of teeth, and that get to around 55 or 60, they're going to be losing the last the last set of teeth, and that makes it difficult for them to break their food down. So, gradually, they'll lose weight. And she's lost a little weight, but this, this uh, preparation is to sort of arrest that problem, if you like. We just give her a little bit of extra care. Sheba the Queen. You're not supposed to fall in love with the, the animals you look after. I'm in an unfortunate position I have. Yeah. As you can tell, Alan doesn't like her at all. Ah, can't be doing it. After working with her for many years, Sheba has learned to trust Alan and Mick completely. It's now only Alan and I that, that do the, the, the hands-on. She's an older elephant and she's a bit... a bit difficult with, with uh, new people. Seen it all, haven't you, sheep? Eh? And the babies. And all the babies, yeah. She's looking after Burma, who's an adult female elephant now, in the same way. She just, she's got that in her, which is crucial, really. 
We have to give this elephant good press. You get a feeling that they understand everything that you're saying yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Uh, it's uncanny. It's frightening. <laughs> you, can, you can feel her listening to you and going, oh, yeah, is that right? Hmm? Maybe not. <laughs> I think she's done, matey. She's done, mate. Yeah, she's done. Yep. Now that she's clean, she'll have to have a few minutes in the sand dirty in herself again. That's children for you. Uh, big grey children. And then they'll all go out and they can be elephants for the rest of the day. Nick will keep his fingers crossed that there's good news from the vet tomorrow. Keeper Tim Rowlands doesn't just care for giraffes at Chester. He's also responsible for Strolch and Loyu, a male and female bear with a volatile relationship. Good morning. These two have only been together for 18 months, but they are like an old married couple who will squabble and fall out and make up. There's never a real harmony amongst them. I mean, they'll quite happily stay in the same pen, they'll sleep in the same basket together, but then she'll get up and give him a cuff around the ear. Strolch is a oh, adult male bear. He's fairly placid, but he knows he's a bear. He knows he's a male bear and he knows his power. So we don't take any chances. Some days he's grumpy and you don't do this. Other days he's fine, he'll eat from your hand. This is why you have to know your animals. Spectacled bears are the second smallest bear in the world and the inspiration for the famous Paddington. So this is Loia, the female, who's got a little bit of a mood on her this morning. Again, that's why you need to know your animals. Um, so it just means you're a little more wary of her. So yeah, I think they've had a little bit of a tiff, but they'll be all right when they go back outside. Hey. It's dinner time and a chance for Tim to provide the bears with some stimulation to snap them out of their bad mood. Bears spend their life looking for food, eating and sleeping. So if it's presented to them, they have nothing to do for the rest of the day. So that's why we do five, six, seven different feeds during a day. And the idea is for this feed, we're gonna try and hide bits of it. So we're just gonna put a little bit in this log pile and then what we're going to do, very simply, is we're going to throw all the logs back on top. It just means that the bears have to spend a little bit of time moving the logs to find their food, as they would do in the wild. So if this was a rotten tree, they'd be digging it apart to look for their food. If they miss any of the coaties, find it. The family of coaties live alongside the bears, just as they would in the cloud forests of the Andes. The hunt for dinner just got interesting. There's a bucket full of fruit somewhere in the enclosure. Strolch and Loyu have a keen sense of smell, sharp elongated claws for digging and a head for heights. All essential when facing competition for dinner. On the menu this morning is an extra special treat. We do an enrichment feed with melons. We'll hide it in different places. Today we've thrown it in the water, encourage him in to go and fish it out. Um, just using the whole of the enclosure, really. And he loves the water. Both coaties and spectacled bears are competent swimmers, but it's Strolch who's first to the watermelon. On this occasion, it seems the bears have won the battle for food, leaving the coaties hunting for scraps. It's just as well as Tim suspects Loyu could be eating for two. The behaviour has been exactly what we'd have expected, that they both came out of the winter period. They started to increase the food intake. Then we had the mating season, um, which lasted perfect length of time. And now they've gone to being an old 
grumpy married couple that just get on with each other. So that's showing all the signs that she's conceived and now wants nothing to do with him. Tim's hopeful that cubs could be on the way this winter. In the meantime, Lo Yu will be giving Strolch the cold shoulder. <laughs> Next time, the keepers for go fashion in the name of feeding. And Christmas comes early for Nessie, the Komodo. You know what's coming, don't you, Nessie? It's yum yum time. Mm -hmm.